Most people understand authority, and there's a lot of preaching on authority, but there isn't a lot of preaching on submission. And remember, he used the word under first before he used the word, and he said, I understand it because I am also a man, not only of authority, but I'm under authority. Give the Lord a praise clap in this house. You know, we want to thank the Lord for the opportunity to build for Him. I don't think you have to look around to say that we need the space. Just to give you a little bit of description, though, of what the building is like out there, the sanctuary is about three times the size of this sanctuary. And all the classrooms have water in them for the kids. And how many of you know... We now meet in three rooms upstairs and in the basement for the super church and the, these rooms now. In fact, the kids' church is about the size of this room in that new building. And we just believe, because we already have 70 to 100 kids every week. And how many of you know, we believe kids are the future for God. God will always have a remnant if we'll do things for children. Jesus said, suffer not the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. So I pulled my Bible out, and for about an hour and 45 minutes, I left DMV different than I went in. <laughs> how many of you know it's all your perspective of how you look at life? And I really mean that, because I believe we need to be Bible people. Amen? In fact, just look at your neighbor and say, I'm packing. Just tell him that. I'm packing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, God is good. Amen? Amen? And we need to understand the power of that. Well, Jesus has an encounter with a man when he was walking on the earth that he left a story to us in a number of the Gospels that I believe is one of the greatest stories. In fact, openly, this encounter that Jesus had helped me understand something about my life that was so impacting that I've really never been the same. And that's been about four, almost 35 years ago now. Right after I got saved, I kind of was, uh, I don't know how you are, but I resisted somewhat of authority. Not having it, but having it over me. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I was rebellious, but how many of you know I, I have someone that I know in my life, and, and if you tell them something or you want them to do something, they say, you're not my boss. Maybe you don't have anybody in your life like that, but maybe you have a child in your life like that, or, you know, a mate, or whatever. But they say, you're not my boss. And when I was preparing this sermon, I couldn't help but think of them because of the fact that we all have a boss, whether we like it or not. And his name is Jesus. But he was amazed because a man in the military at the time, a satirian soldier actually recognize something that I believe much of the body of Christ doesn't recognize. And I used to think it was that they didn't recognize that they had authority. But I've sensed after studying this and the revelation that God gave me about this years ago, I think authority is very, very important that we all need to recognize that we have authority in Jesus Christ. It's delegated power, but it is authority. But how many of you know there's some other things that I believe Jesus marveled over? It really wasn't over the authority word. It was over some other words in this passage. And this is what it says, beginning in verse 5. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is laying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come to your house and the centurion answered and said, and I believe these are the words, not the words Jesus spoke, but the words the centurion spoke that amazed him. Because later on in this passage, it literally says this in verse 10, and when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed him, assuredly, I say to you, I have not seen such great faith in Israel. Now how many of you know it's not too easy to impress God? 
We just sang about Jesus casting the stars and developing and, and separating land from earth. He was there at the beginning. He said, let us make them in our image. And how many of you know, you can't impress God too easy. Come on, that's true. But the word said he was absolutely amazed at what this man had said. And so let's look at what this man said because I believe there's three key statements in this passage. The number one thing he said is this. He said, and Jesus said, I will come and heal your servant. And the centurion answered in verse 8 saying, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Now, how many of you realize that we need to know who we are, we need to know what we were given, we need to know that our steps are ordered by the Lord, but we also need to keep humility about it. Amen. Because without humility, we really can't carry any authority. We can't carry any real power from God, not recognizing that it's not our power we wield, it's not the power that we have within ourselves, but it's the power that was put in us by God. Yes. And only he receives the credit. How many of you know that you will share his authority? You will share being blessed by him. You will share eternal life with him. But how many of you know you will not share his praises? He doesn't give you praises. You give him praises. Amen. He doesn't give, you don't give him authority. He gives us authority. Come on, now, preach it. So he said, the first thing he said is that I humble myself. You're not worthy to come under my roof. And the next statement is absolutely to me amazing. Because he said these words. I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only speak a word. Everybody say only. only. And he said a word. One word. I believe one word from God can change our life. One word from God can heal us. One word from God can save our marriage. One word from God can heal the sick. Yes. And this man was not even a Christian. This man was not a Jew. He was not in the synagogue on Sunday. But he recognized something about his words. And not only his words, but his words having authority and power. Lord. How many of you know that the power of life and death, we talked last week, number one, he said, only speak a word. How many of you know your words have power? Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? What do I mean by that? Well, let me just uh, ask you this. It doesn't say that we're going to give an account for every sin. Do you know that? That we're under grace. And praise God that if we ask for forgiveness, we are forgiven. And aren't you glad that God never gives up on us and has grace for all of us at all times? But how many of you know he said, you will give account for every idle word. Words have more power than even our actions do. They do more damage than bullets can ever do. But he said, your words are the words I want to hear. How many of you, let me just ask you a question in here. How many of you would like to have read back to you the words you've spoken all of last week? Oh, don't shout me down here. Hallelujah. Well, the reason we do that is because we, we talk without thinking. But this man, evidently, because what he recognized was he said, only speak a word. Do you realize we can create an atmosphere that we live in with words? That the words of our mouth create either life or death. There is blessing or cursing in your mouth. You know, if you want your healing, if you want to be delivered, if you need a breakthrough, how many of you know your breakthrough is on your tongue, not mine? And so we need to understand, and we don't really have to go in and study this, but I think what we do have to understand is your words have power. Everybody say, my words have power of either life or death. Choose you this day, life. Come on, give him a praise clap if you believe that in this house. He said, only speak a word and my servant shall be healed. 
Now, he understood something that I want to get to this morning that is so powerful. This next statement, he says, For I also am a man under authority. I also am a man under authority. Let me tell you, I think sometimes military people understand the kingdom of God better than just born-again Christians. Because how many of you know in the military, you're not your own. You were bought with a price. Your mama, this is what was told to me in boot camp. Your mama might have had you, but you're mine now. <laughs> See, there's something about recognizing we're in the army of God that brings a thought into our life that nothing else can really compare to. This man was a soldier and he understood authority, but he didn't only understand authority because there's two words here that he said. I also am a man under authority. I think the word under is much more powerful than the word authority. And what, because a lot of people, they understand having authority and what they can do and they can bind the devil and they can loose things in their life. But what he wants to know is I understand because I'm not only just a man with authority, I'm a man under authority. When you begin to understand that it's not a bad word to be under something and understand the power of why you're under it because God wants to protect you because the word actually under, in fact, let's look at this word. First, this word means to be in a position below or beneath something. How many of you know, it says that we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath, but not when it comes to God. Amen. Come on. Not when it comes to God with the authority that's been put over us. How many of you know that this word is so powerful that, that many times today, this word particularly is is really looked down on. It says, in a condition of subjection or submission. How many of you know, well, I don't have to submit. You're not my boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might not be your boss, but you have a boss. Amen. And you better, because the first thing I want to know about everybody, I don't want to know about your gifts. I don't want to know how talented you are. I don't want to know how good looking you are. What I want to know is who do you submit to? Because see, most people understand the authority. Yeah, don't shout me down here, but <laughs> most people understand authority. And there's a lot of preaching on authority, but there isn't a lot of preaching on submission. And remember, he used the word under first before he used the word. And he said, I understand it because I am also a man, not only of authority, but I'm under authority. And listen to the last definition. This is why that's so powerful. Because the last definition is so as to be covered. Who is your covering? I know the Lord's your covering, but do you have people that speak into your life that's going to help keep you out of trouble? How many of you know that really, I mean, let's face it, we all go through our teen years, and in our teen years, how many of you know, there's a not a lot of submission that we want. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're raising teens, but I just suggest to you that you remember how you were as a teen. That's right. Come on. Come on. That word submission had no place in our vocabulary or to be under something. But what you began to understand when you grow older is that mom and dad had your best interest at heart. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on, church, are you there? Amen. But we want them to recognize that when they're kids and how many are teenagers, how many of you know they're not going to do that? You didn't do that. Just look at your neighbor. I think he's talking to me right now. Just tell him that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you aren't too far removed from the teen years, so maybe there's still a little bit of that in you, but I want to tell you, you need a covering. You need a body. You need a church. You need people to speak into your life. You need to belong to being something bigger than you are. And when we do that and when we understand the power, then we can handle the authority God gives us. But if we try to just handle authority without understanding the under, how many of you know we do more harm with that authority than we do good? Because you have authority whether you think you do or not, and you have it even if you don't act right. And what begins to happen with this authority, and what's really sad about being under authority is, is what we don't understand many times, is that authority will either use it for good or we'll use it for bad. 
When we don't submit ourselves under authority, what begins to happen is that authority builds up in us and what it does is it begins to do things to where we even begin to manipulate people. I know Christians that have great authority and that's powerful and that's anointing. But how many of you know, God did not give you that kind of authority to manipulate or hurt other people. Oh, good preaching, Pastor. See, we, I'll get to authority in a minute, but we've got to discuss this word under. Because if you don't understand about under authority, then you won't ever have authority in the way God wants you to have it because you will misuse it. It will be in there. It will be powerful because all people have it, but you better learn how to use it. Amen. Because you're either going to use it for good or you're going to lose it for bad. You're going to either do God's agenda with it or you're going to do your own agenda with it. Woo, good preaching. Because this man understood, I'm a man under authority. But look at what he states. It's really powerful to me. He goes on to say, having soldiers under me, and I also say to one, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. How many of you know, every one of those things, Pastor Mike actually pointed this out to me in between service. I thought it was so great, I'm going to use it. And next time I'll just say it was my idea. <laughs> I'm giving him credit once, so. But the real power of this is, did you notice what he said there? He used one word statements. He said, I say to a soldier, go, one word, and they go. They don't question what's going on. They do it. To a servant, to those that serve me, come and they come. Do this, do this, and they do it. How many of you know, even one word from you can make a difference on how you're handling your authority? How many of you know, most of the time when we're trying to make our point, we use too many words. We send ourselves into an argument. Good pre Hallelujah. I'm glad God dropped that in my heart. I feel warm all over. Because, you know, when you're a lion, man, you're full of words. But I mean, when you really understand authority, it only takes one word. Many times when you're in a military action, how many of you know, the commander doesn't have time to explain every part of what he needs done. He speaks a word and the soldiers under him do it. Now we say, well, that can be abusive. Yes, it can, and I'll show you how in a little while. But you have to understand that still, that's the order God set up, whether we like it or not. And that's the order we have to work in, whether we like it or not. That's why it doesn't say, if the leader that is over you doesn't do everything right, it says to not follow them, but it does not say to talk bad about them, to curse them. It says, touch not God's anointing, because if you do, you bring a curse on yourself. Amen. Maybe some of the things that happen to people is because of the way they talk about other people. Yeah. Oh, good preaching. Yeah. Come on, church. Can I get an amen in this house? Yeah. See, I'm telling you, we, do, we understand authority. We don't understand under at all. Because we don't want to be under. Because in America, we're all free thinkers and free spirits and we have the power, we have the anointing. Yes, you do, as long as you have a covering. And the moment you out, move outside a covering, what begins to happen is now you're operating with God's authority in the wrong way. And you can do more harm with it than you can do good. Good preaching, Pastor. Hello. Psalms 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under. Everybody say under. Under, under the shadow of the Almighty. He who abides. Let me ask you this, really. The abiding means to stay under. It doesn't mean you're under today and you're in rebellion tomorrow. Or you're under five days a week and then last, you know, Kind of like me, I've been trying to kind of watch some of the stuff I eat. As I get older, my body keeps shifting around. Anybody notice that before? 
And uh, so I've been trying to kind of watch how I eat. So during the week, I really watch what I eat. And on the weekends, I eat whatever I want. <laughs> how many of you know that's not working real well? <laughs> Is anybody in the house this morning? So I've kind of decided, well, I'm going to go to Saturdays to not eat what I want. I'll just do it on Sundays. <laughs> Boy, am I glad it's Sunday. <laughs> but my heart is, how many of you know submission under covering doesn't work that way? You're under a covering seven days a week, right. 24 hours a day when people speak into your life. And, and I'll tell you, it's not easy to find a person to be covered because openly there's so many flakes out there anymore and I mean you know when God talked about fruits I think he meant people <laughs> flakes fruits and nuts you know what I'm talking about I mean you think it's granola but I think it's folks <laughs> and I, I don't mean that from a bad way but openly I mean how many of you know that I really select who I let speak into my life yeah. I always tell people this openly before the Lord. If you have a problem with Jubilee, please come to me. Yes. I want you to come to me. But there's three things I ask if you're going to come to me. Number one, you're a giver in the church. If you're not a giver, don't come to me. If you want to give and want some questions answered, I'll be more than happy to meet with you. But I'm talking about a problem. Because I figure if you have no money invested, you have no voice invested. Because the word says where your heart is, is where your money is. Number two, I ask you pray about it. Don't just come out of some frustration or whatever, pray about it. And number three, you have the well-being of the pastors and this church at heart. And don't come with just a problem, come also with an answer. Because anybody can find problems. But if you don't have answers, don't come to me. Because you're, unless it's literally, or you want to help develop an answer or something. But I don't think that's wrong for me to ask. Because in my position, I can have all kinds of people speaking into my life. But I don't let people speak into my life. Unless they do those three things. Can I get an amen? Amen. I mean, I'm being transparent because I feel when people, I'm going to sit under their covering, I'm going to let them speak into my life, I want to know they have those things in mind. That's right. Because it's very easy to find fault when you have no investment. That's right. mm -hmm. Amen. And I say this in all love, but I'm very selective, even with people, I mean, I'll talk to anybody and I have those three things in mind, but there are others that come into my life that I have given the liberty to be able to speak into my life. And there are not too many. I could probably count them on one hand. But I know the other thing. The fourth thing I ask of them is, are they willing to cover me? Are they doing this for my good? Or are they doing this for criticism? Come on, church. Are you there? You all need someone to speak into your life. Everybody needs that. You're not an island among yourself. But... You don't need every flake, fruit, and nut speaking into your life. So God, this man, understood that. How many of you know that then this man, if he was a centurion, he took and let others over him speak into his life, but he recognized when they spoke into his life, he needed to speak into somebody else's life, the soldier. And how many of you know that's how the kingdom of God is? Do you know that literally through your words, if you don't understand how authority works, I want to tell you what begins to happen is you stop the very angels that come to fight for you with your words. The very blessings that God has sent to you, you either release angels or you bind angels, and you either release demons or you bind demons, and you do one of the two with your words. So how are we speaking? How are we understanding under? If we understand the power of authority, then we need to understand the under part. Because this man said, I am also a man under authority. He didn't see just his position. He understood how the kingdom of God worked. And one of the greatest re revelations you can get from God 
is to submit to someone. It doesn't have to be this church. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be the under-shepherd of this body. But find someone, a brother, a sister, to speak into your life and then do what they say. How many of you know that the real coin of being spent, in fact, well, I'm just going to say this. Everybody say, I love pastor. You want me to tell you a great way you can understand where your heart is? Just check your bank statement. They're getting ready to come out. Just look at your bank statement and that'll tell you where your heart is. I didn't say that. God said in his word, he said these words. He said, where a man's money is, that's where also his heart is. What you spend your money on is what your heart is. But how many of you know it's the same way spiritually? What you spend your time giving yourself to is where your heart is. Yeah. Amen. And only use money, not, we've already received the offering, so just look at your neighbor and say, relax. Just tell them that, relax. <laughs> but what he is saying is you can check and find where your heart is anytime you want. All you have to do is open your checkbook. And it'll tell you where your heart is. That's right. And God will show you things about your finances. A lot of people want to break through financially, but they don't understand their heart's not in the right place. They're handing that godly authority to the enemy to use instead of giving to God. How many of you know, and the reason he says that is because how many of you know just like that seven days a week thing? How many of you know that God doesn't get 10% of your money? He's the owner of all your money. That's right. You just get to use it. What a deal. It's better than the government. Your taxes are higher than 10%. In fact, many people have wanted to go to a 10% tax. Man, I would say, I'm for that. Hallelujah. Because that's a godly principle that works. In fact, this country rebelled over taxation without representation. But we got to understand the real power of being under something means that you submit not only to God, but you have a better, bigger thing in mind than just your own agenda. Right. And how many of you know, if God's got all your money, you spend your money differently. Stay the course. Because it isn't really about money. Money is not the problem. The heart is the problem. God is not trying to get our money. He wants our heart. Amen. And when our heart is not right, if there's rebellion, if we're saying the wrong things, if we're not into a covering, what begins to happen is we want to do our own thing. And whether like it or not, that's called rebellion. And God says rebellion is like witchcraft. Anybody want to practice witchcraft in here? You're probably in the wrong house for that. Well, then you need to learn how to break witchcraft because there's stuff that goes on that we're in battles of every day that try to come into our life that's trying to get your heart. He doesn't want your money. God doesn't even want your money. Satan really doesn't want your money either. What Satan wants is he wants to know where your heart is. That's right. Because where your heart is is who you are. In fact, one of the greatest things... Uh, one of the first meetings I ever went to in ministry, and I mean, we weren't even in this property. I think we had eight people going to the church at the time, and we were, we were here. We were renting a little place across town, and I felt God call me here, and we needed to build a church. And, and uh, I go to this meeting, and I came home wounded openly. I was. I was hurt in my heart. And uh, so I coming home, I told Pastor Sandy, I said, I'm going to paradise and build a church. I don't need anybody. I was younger then. Can I get an amen? amen? But I'm being transparent. I really was. I was hurt. And you know, I could have said, well, you know, three days later I'm in my prayer closet and God said, Steve, you're in rebellion. I said, I know God, but I'm hurt. How many people do that? Yeah. I'm hurt, God. Those people did it to me. Those people made me get in rebellion. Oh, right. 
If it wasn't in there, you couldn't be in it. You know, they didn't get that in you. They just brought that out of you. I mean, I like to compare marriage to a tea bag and hot water. When you dip the tea bag in the hot water, whatever's in the bag's going to come out. Oops. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, how many of you know people can't make you be rebellious? You have that in you somewhere. And you're not going to know when it's cold water, but when it's hot water, it's going to come out who you are in your heart. And that is so sad because really what begins to happen in our lives is whatever's in there is going to come out under pressure. And sadly enough, it's either going to be submission or rebellion. It's either going to be life or it's going to be death. And this is why Jesus said to us, and God gave me that scripture, even though I said that, how many of you know, I go to my Bible and this is what it says. He said, I came to preach the gospel to the poor. I said, me too, God. The next statement says, I came to heal the brokenhearted. I couldn't say, me too, God, because I was brokenhearted. See, until we get our hearts right, we will never understand authority. We will have it. It isn't taken from you. But you can never use it correctly when you're wounded. Because wounded people wound other people. Jesus puts it this way. The blind cannot lead the blind for they will both fall in the ditch. If you have a verbal problem, if you have an anger problem, if you have a drug problem, an alcoholic problem, if you have a pornography problem, if you have all these problems, it's going to be hard for you to help others because what happens is you want everybody to respond to you with kindness, but you don't respond to them with kindness. And how many of you know the word says, that which a man sows... He will also reap. So you know what? If you're an angry person, you're going to find a lot of angry people in your life. If you're a loving person, you're going to find a lot of loving. I'm glad you guys are amen and thank you. I mean, we need to understand this because it is so powerful. It's so real. See, we don't understand the word under. We understand authority and we're going to cover that. But if you don't understand that first word, this man had power because of he was under something. He recognized the word submission. He recognized the word covering. In fact, don't think of it as submission. Think of it as they have your well-being in mind. Let people speak into your life that have your well-being in mind. And I want to tell you, when you find people like that, they're like a gem, a jewel, a prize. Because you know. I know Shelley's here, but why I say that about teenagers so often is because what is so hilarious, I got this card from her on my birthday one year and it said, Dad, when I was a child I thought you knew everything. And then I became a teen and I didn't think you knew anything. Just look at your neighbor and say, I was a teen. And then she said, now that I'm an adult with children, Dad, I think you know everything. Why? Because I know, my kids know I have their well-being in mind. So they allow me to speak into their lives and I count that an honor and I don't abuse that. But church, find somebody to speak into your life. I have them that speak into my life and it isn't always words I want to hear. Because without under, I know I can't wield the authority God gives me. But I know how to bind and loose, I know how to do things, but I don't think people understand about under. Because authority is easy to wield when you're under something. But it becomes a weight when you use it wrong. And it can destroy you. I've seen it destroy ministries. Because somebody all of a sudden was successful and they thought they were somebody. And they stopped giving the praise to God and started taking on that praise. And how many of you know, God will share His authority, His grace, His love with you, but He will not share His praise with you. 
Let me be God only. That's the very first thing it says in the Ten Commandments. Have one God. And whatever you worship, that's your God. And you can begin to worship the wrong things even though you know that. I know this is challenging, church, and we'll get to the authority thing because what, what we need to do, in fact, I need to close. Man, time goes so fast. You guys are such pullers on me. I appreciate it. But next week, I didn't even get to use the weights. You guys are going to see me lift weights next week. I like to lift weights. So if you want to see me lift a weight, come next week. I'm going to take my shirt off. No, I'm just kidding. I don't want to empty the place. I want to fill it up. Hallelujah. But, but I want to get to this today, but I can't. Because I want to tell you, authority is like a weight. In fact, I'll close with this thought. Listen to me very carefully. I used to do a lot of, I don't know if you, does anybody here know what a cling and jerk is? It's where you take weights and you lift them and you get them to your chest. And then you lift partly with your legs and your body, your torso. When they do that for the world championship, I don't know if you know this, but they don't just have to lift the weights. They have to control the weight. Mm -hmm. If they can't get it in control when they got it over their head, many of them drop it because of the weight of it. Authority is delegated power that is under control. Because it's a word called exosias, which is where we get the word exercise. And I'll tell you, the more you exercise spiritually, though you get older, you can swing and lift more of the weight. It isn't on how young, how healthy, how good you are. It has to do with how is your building in the inner man. Because just like the outer man, he can lift weights. But in this life, the older we get, I can't lift what I used to lift. I mean, Donnie was here and he told me on his 50th birthday... He bench pressed 500 pounds at 50. I mean, you could lay it on me, but I couldn't get it off me. <laughs> but let me tell you something about weight. You lift and learn to lift what you can control. Amen. Amen. Because when you're lifting weights, if you don't control that weight, it can hurt you. And it can damage some things in your body. You can rip muscles. You can crack ribs. You learn how to control weights. You must learn how to control authority. Amen. If you don't, you have it. And what happens is it builds up in you to where eventually it manifests itself through anger, unforgiveness, because you have authority. You're supposed to be using it. But if you don't use it and control it, because God gave authority to everybody. That's right. That's right. What was amazing to Jesus, not that the man had authority, it was what he understood about authority. Amen. Most people forget to understand authority. They just want the power, which is also another word of authority, which is where we get the word dynamite. It means the power to move things. He uses the same thing when he says, if you'll say to the mountain in Mark, be cast into the sea, it will be cast into the sea if you believe the words you say. So Jesus was amazed by this man's word and what he wield, even though he wasn't even a Christian. I think when we learn to control authority, there's so much more power that comes into our life. But I'm going to tell you, just like exercise, to build muscle, you have to exercise it regularly. And when you do it regularly, you can handle more authority. Mm -hmm. Come on. If you misuse weights and tear a muscle or hurt someone else with that weight, how many of you know you can't exercise for a while? So this is what we're going to talk about next week. Did you get anything out of that yeah. this morning? Yeah. Give the Lord a praise talk.